Hi everyone from TMA 150 Public Speaking. It's Will Cush here again, and I'm going to be doing my policy persuasive speech this evening. Um, for my persuasive speech topic, I chose something that I heard a lady, Marilyn Pryor, mention one time, and she was someone I observed for my physical therapy observation hours. I thought it was interesting, so I chose to go a little bit more in depth with that. Um, I really believe that if you are going to be receiving some sort of government subsidized health care, uh, you should be required to do some sort of physical exercise. So just something to get your blood pumping. I don't by any means mean you need to be doing extensive rigorous exercise like running a marathon or anything like that, but I just believe you should have to do some sort of exercise if you're going to be receiving health care subsidized by the government. Um, I think we all know that there is a definite need for government subsidized health care in America. If anyone's ever seen a hospital bill, you know that it is extremely, extremely expensive and it's unfortunate, but there are huge numbers of people in America that simply can't afford the necessary treatments and procedures that they're going to have to have done at some point in their lives. And none of us will live very long without having to receive some sort of health care. It's just a fact. Um, routine exercise is pretty well known to have beneficial effects on one's health. Um, I looked at an article from Mayo Clinic and there was a quote that being active boosts one's high density lipoproteins, which is your HDL or your good cholesterol, while decreasing unhealthy triglycerides. So it decreases unwanted pathogens and can increase our good cholesterol. Um, I looked at an article from the Better Health Channel. It said that physical activity can improve your health, decrease the risk of certain diseases, and help you recover better from a period of hospitalization or bed rest. And I also looked at an article from Harvard Nutrition that stated that those who do not exercise consistently at all, uh, you, they run an increased risk of developing a number of chronic diseases, and that includes type 2 diabetes. So. I am a certified personal trainer. Um, I grew up in a pretty healthy household. My mom is a dietitian, and my dad's also in the healthcare field, and he's a marathon runner. So we're um, just about as annoying as you can get on the health front. Um, and as a professional, as a health professional, and as a personal trainer, I would hear people all the time saying that after they exercised, their blood pressure went down. That was probably the number one thing that I would hear is that they could get off their blood pressure meds, their blood pressure was down consistently when they monitor it. And I'll also just hear that people felt like they regained a sense of increased health, kind of more subjectively, but they felt better. Um, and consistent exercise is well known to improve blood flow and decrease the risk of peripheral vascular disease. Basically what that is is a narrowing of the arteries in the extremities so you can have trouble getting blood flow to your arms, to your legs, it results in amputations and people with diabetes and all sorts of bad things. And exercise is known to decrease the risk of that or even reverse it when possible. It can strengthen your arteries, strengthen your veins, so you can get more blood flow to the parts of your body that aren't as central like your heart and your brain. Um, and I also did 40 hours of observation at Stroke Ward for my PT school observation, and I, it was amazing to me. I witnessed people going from not being able to stand up to walking around, which is a huge step, but people just, you know, not being able to reach up to touch their phone or type in numbers going from that to at actually being able to function. It was really cool. Um, I feel like most of us who, when we see someone in that kind of shape, whether it's like they're at a stroke or they're just super overweight and they're in a wheelchair or anything like that, we feel really bad for that person. We feel like we wish there was something we could do to help them or just something that they could do to help themselves, you know? Um, and sometimes it's true, like someone with adult onset diabetes who had a poor diet their whole life, and sometimes it's not true, like if you have a terminal cancer or a glandular disorder, there's other things we can do like pharmacology and other modes of care, but uh, the person might not fully recover. And I recognize that, and I realize that while routine exercise won't alleviate all health ailments, it does have numerous benefits, and I believe those benefits have a good potential at increasing part of a person's health. So even if you are say, a, a terminal person, you might not fully recover, but I believe that exercise can actually alleviate some of your symptoms and make you feel and be healthier in general. Um, 
I also know that America spends a lot of money on government subsidized health care. And it's my personal belief that if someone is going to receive tax money, government health care in any way, then they should kind of be required to do everything in their own power to see that they're also trying to get healthier. I don't think you should just be able to sit on um, government money coming in and not actually actively try to get better. I think that is huge, you know, because that makes it possible for you to get off the government health care faster, um, makes you live a better life. It increases your chances of that. Um, and basically, I don't see why you wouldn't want to. I think if someone was in dire, if I was in dire health straits and there was no cure, but there was maybe like a 5% chance that if I exercised or if I did something that my symptoms might be alleviated, I would feel better, I would, you know, be more personable, just be in a better mood in general. I just don't see why I wouldn't take that option. So, I, again, I don't mean to say that all sick people should be doing strenuous exercise, doing, you know, like heavy bench presses, marathons, anything like that, CrossFit. But I do think that if we're going to spend our tax money to help people get better, we should also be pursuing every possible option that that individual has to improve. And I think that exercise is a huge option that is often underutilized in healthcare. Um, just as an example, when I look at someone like Jared, the spokesperson from Subway, I look at his before pictures and I think, all right, here's a guy who is down the road to obviously obesity, but diabetes, you know, like peripheral blood flow issues, all sorts of negative things that come along with his health, his poor health. Um, and, you know, it's just not a great way to live. It really isn't. And with his improved diet, with his improved exercise, he was able to run a marathon in five hours and 13 minutes. I pulled from a website and he, um, I really don't think he'd be able to do anything like that if it wasn't for the weight he lost, which was actually 245 pounds, which is an awesome feat in and of itself. Um, and obviously, Jared's story is an extreme example of someone recovering from health issues just by exercise and diet. But to me, it really brings light the idea that anyone can potentially get better through exercise and diet, through taking their health more seriously. You might not lose 245 pounds, and you might not, you know, be a spokesperson for Subway or anything like that. But if he can do this and reverse the, the like, the path that he was on, he was on the path of really bad health, and he reversed that. And I think that's a positive sign to everyone that it is possible to better your situation. Um, let's see, a main issue to this argument, I realize is that a lot of really ill people, and terminally ill patients, they might not want to exercise because they might just say, you know what, uh, I haven't exercised for 80 years, this isn't really my thing, don't want to start now, and I get that. Uh, however, the duty, I believe, of healthcare professionals, like someone I aspire to be someday, is to provide the best quality of care to individuals who are in need of care. So if someone is paying for their own treatment and they choose to say, you know what, I don't care what the benefits are, I just don't want to exercise, then in my opinion, let them do so. Let them sit on their bed and they can not take my help or anyone else's help for that matter. But my feeling is that if someone is receiving assistance, if you are receiving tax money, if you're receiving government subsidized health care, um, you should, should be required to exercise. Because if you do so, you run a greater chance of increasing your current situation, getting better, which is the idea of government subsidized health care in the first place. Anyway, that is my speech. Thank you, guys.